Okay, review time. Something um, slightly different, uh, certainly a, a blast from the past. This is Italeri's V22 Osprey 148 scale. Now, back history a little bit. Um, obviously, a revolutionary design, something new. It's like a Chinook on steroids, but it's all maneuvering and everything else. Needless to say, there was lots of problems with this aircraft during development. Um, so much so, it obviously took a long time to become operational in its present guise as it is now. Last few years, been seeing around the UK as well, absolutely fantastic. Uh, but it took so long that the prototype uh, for it was the mainstay of Italeri's kit range. Uh, what they've done now is they've sort of reboxed it and done a few little tweaks to it to bring it up more up to the modern standard. Now, if this is exactly like the modern standard, I'm not sure. Haven't had a look around firsthand at the real thing yet. Um, limited references on it and things like that, but certainly if you want to do an Osprey on 148 scale, this is the only option you've got. If you're thinking 172nd, on the other hand, Hasegawa have released a 72nd version of it, which apparently is absolutely fantastic, all singing, all dancing. So, usual thing, a tallery. Quite a flimsy little box, but you do get some nice art, sort of artwork on it and everything else like that. It's kit number 2622. Um, running through, usual thing, just get some measurements. A little bit of blurb, not much to be honest going on on the box. Um, seems to be a new way of doing it, but you get a little photo of the sprue layout, uh, the decals, things like that. Same again on that side. Now, this is totally new to me, uh, and I haven't even opened the box yet, so we can have a look in here. So, in the box, we get, as I say, it's a flimsy box, but quite frankly, it does the trick, okay? So, straight away in here, we've got some uh, a correction sheet, um, something we'll have a look at in a moment, I think. Let me pop this to one side. Seeing as we've got them in the hands, let's have a look at the decals first. So, immediately, the first thing you notice, there is no um, protector sheet on this one, which is a little bit odd, but there we go, that's the decals. Um, they don't look too bad. Nice, they're very matted back, which is quite nice. It's probably on a par with using a normal flat coat, which obviously these are going to be flat. It's the marine ones, obviously. Um, so limited things there, but what they've done, they've managed to put the, um, these are the ones for the blades, I do believe, round the wrong way. So instead of being white to the outside, red in the middle, on the actual ones they've done here, they've done them round the wrong way. But anyway, personally, I'd probably paint those on, but certainly it's a nice touch that they've actually had the thing to say, okay, it's wrong, we're going to correct it. Okay, the sheets, they too tend to be a little bit weird. So usual things you can imagine, we've got the parts callouts and everything else down here. I think you use all of them. Uh, all the color callouts are either FS numbers or the actual uh, model master range. So as we can imagine. It's usual thing, straight in with a cockpit, seeing as we're almost helicopter form, um, and obviously the interior. It's basic but practical. You could liven this up if you wanted to. Clear parts going onto the inside of the fuselage, pretty much a standard. Okay, then we've got the ramps for the rear, so you can either have it as a one piece with it closed or two piece with it open at the back, which is a nice touch. Uh, again, a couple of scoops and various things going on, uh, which are probably new to this particular version of the kit. Hydraulic ramps stand at the bottom and showing you how they go in at the top. The all important uh, upper wing area, which is this is obviously movable and everything else. The other thing as well, you have to remember, it can rotate um, through basically 90 degrees uh, to be in the stowed configuration, uh, which is quite a nice touch because obviously then if you want to, you could fold all the blades up and have it on a ship and go through it all like that. Got the usual thing up here. So we've got um, the engine nauticals, obviously the front end, those big old blades that are gonna be on there. Some limited detail going on on those. Again, something perhaps you could scratch, build up and do, but some nice little scooping and differences. And I think that's probably one area where this kit is different to the old one, okay. A few more little fences going in on there, okay, as I go through, and you can position the engines, obviously, in the up position, which is its standard landing configuration, uh, rather than being forward. But if you were doing in-flight, obviously, you could put it on a pole, some little acrylic rod, have it in-flight, be a little bit different. Nice touch, so you've got a one-piece canopy for the rear, which is a lovely touch, because it saves all that messing around. So you can mask it all up and then fit it in there, it's absolutely lovely. Tail system with the tail planes going on. Obviously the blades then slot it into the actual, uh, these hub area, if you like, uh, as it goes through and in there. 
and then onto the back side uh, as you can imagine the gear going on some of the sensors um, and a few of the lumps and bumps and the aerials all going on there same with the main gear as well everything in and for the front which is obviously bringing it more up to date with all the various sensors limited paint but let's face it they are all like that so really you've got um, light gull and dark gold greys uh, over this one uh, they're saying ghost grey it was gold, uh, gold grey. Uh, I'm sorry, yes, ghost grey. I'm thinking of gold grey. I'm thinking of the old, older stuff, uh, the more creamy. So, ghost grey, which is the standard US Navy colours uh, for this type of thing, and marine colours as well. And right the way through, they do have those very nice markings up onto their blades as well, which really makes this particular aircraft. Again, a blank sheet at the back. So, not a mass fan of their instructions with the tannery, but you know, they do serve the purpose, and they're very nice. So, what do we get? Fortunately, you get one giant bag of bits, just like this, and as I say, I've never opened it. If you don't, haven't seen an Osprey before, just think Chinook size. Um, a little bit smaller, perhaps, than a Chinook, but in that ballpark. So we've got the clear parts, which we'll look at in a moment. Uh, just have that one out of the way. So, obviously we'll start off with the big bit first, if I can get it out. So, in here, we've actually got your main fuselage so you've got here all raised details so there's no recessed detail which gives you a clue of how old this kit is okay so but what you have got is obviously it's all raised riveting which you know i you know i'm not sure if it is that raised riveting all over this one i would have thought it would be more composites than anything else but certainly it is all raised detail right the way through so you've got an option you can um rescribe it obviously go right the way through it you could then think to yourself right okay well look you know i'm going to live with it and you can dry brush up raised detail which is a little technique i used to do a long time ago now um, but you can actually dry brush it takes a long time well worth it you can bring all those details to life no problem you can use a wash and back wash it in reverse so actually you go against the grain so to speak uh, and leave the wash built up on the sides which give a similar effect to it as you go right the way through but it does give you an idea of the age of this thing and I'm looking at to see if I can see any dates anywhere. But you have got some nice detail uh, texture in the back which obviously will bring it all to life as you go right the way through. We have got some ejector pin marks, again it's showing its age from the kit. If we twist it a little bit you can probably see down here in this area uh, and generally in. Ejector pin marks on the inside all seem to be recessed in there which is quite nice. And as I say, some of the lumps and bumps on here, I don't know how practical they are to today's machine. Cockpit for the internal detail, as you can imagine, is pretty well non-existent. Okay, but it gives you an idea of how big this is going to be. So with the tail on it as well, it's going to be about there. It's going to be around about 35 centimetres uh, for the kit itself. Okay, so upper wing, you've got these uh, vortex generators to obviously give better uh, over the wing, surface, surface area of the wing and everything else like that. So they're all in there. Again, it's all raised detail absolutely everywhere on this kit. So unfortunately, as you can probably see down here, some of this plumbing and uh, the actual bays and everything, probably be better to rescribe it and do it all like that. This is the um, these giant uh, cones for the top of the uh, main rotors. For the rotor heads and the rotor heads themselves and then you've obviously got the blades again they're recessed personally i'd sand them completely out and start fresh but generally it's all there okay internals we got this yeah these are the insides um so you've got the seats all up in the stowed position not quite sure what those are actually something to do with the back end of the engine uh the inside of the blades uh because obviously it's a two-part sandwich or laminate blade system Okay, <clears throat> again, you've got the beginnings of some nice detail inside these main wheel wells. You've got ejector pin marks inside the doors, unfortunately, you're gonna have to do something with that. Um, you've got these uh, fences, which are quite nicely detailed, okay, right the way through. Windscreen wipers, obviously, aerials, lumps and bumps, as you can imagine. Looks like the FLIR camera unit down there, and everything else, okay. And then we've got the refueling probe, which, quite frankly, is nasty. Um, there's no detail to that at all. You might want to do an aftermarket job or probably easier way is to make one. Um, or certainly just the end point itself because it's pretty naff that. Okay. Yeah, I think what we're trying to get over with this particular kit is you've got all the basics to make a great kit. Now this will depend on if you ever want to make the time because you just know by the time you've spent six months scratch building this and making it into a stunning kit that's accurate and everything else like that and then Trumpeter or Hobby Boss or somebody will just release one. 
<laughs> that was a bit where it makes you cry. Um, no weight on wheels, as you can imagine. It's pretty standard down there. Again, raised detail. It'd be interesting to know. I'm going to have to do some research on this and have a look at it. But I don't, shouldn't, well, imagine it's got all this raised riveting detail everywhere on this. I imagine being a modern aircraft, it's going to be weight saving and it'll be composites and things like that rather than using standard metal um, and rivet system of doing everything. But as I said, it's all here. The detail is all here. The, the, because of its scale, if you ever saw what I did to the um, Ravel Chinook, we super detailed one of them. We did the cockpit completely again. We did all the hosing and the wiring all down the rear end. We did a refueling bay uh, with it all opened up and everything else like that. So it is possible to turn around quite a basic kit and give it that nice level of detail as you go right the way through it. But certainly for a 148th scale Osprey, do so, doing something like this. Um, you know, it is the only one on the market at the present of doing this review. Um, I imagine because it's going to be a mainstay and pretty much um, going to be in service for a long, long time, I should imagine. I imagine somebody's going to come along and probably do an absolute pucker one in the future. But as far as I'm aware, I don't know if anybody's got one in the, on the plans or on the books or even the design stage at the moment. So you're going to be about a year, two years off, even if they started it tomorrow. So certainly, you know, if you're going to do an Osprey, you can do 48 scale, Italy is the way to go.